I'm Ellie and welcome to Arcadia, my self-converted Toyota Hiace, which I've recently begun traveling New South Wales in. Now I did a van vlog video of my practice week of van life, but this time I am on the road for good, so this is my first week of full-time van life. Let me show you how it went. I'm Ellie Wilder and you're watching Wilder in Motion. So here is day one for real. I'm attempting to go away for good, potentially for sort of four months. There's a huge thunderstorm that decided to strike just as I left and that's why I've pulled over now. The place where I stopped is under a tree. It started to get really hard so I was going to move to a different area, not under a tree. Uh, but the van wouldn't start. So I've given it a few minutes. Hopefully it does start. Okay so it's literally two minutes later and as you can probably tell by my face, the van didn't start and I'm really upset because this has been going on for months of this electrical bull. So the mechanic gets there and it's not the battery, it's the starter motor. And so they were able to like literally bang something with a hammer and it started. And then we got to an auto electrician and now I have to leave it there overnight and come back first thing tomorrow morning so they can fix it. So as you can see, I'm in a bushland setting and that's because I went to the auto electrician and since it's a long weekend now, I'm not going to be able to get the replacement starter motor until Wednesday. So I've decided to just come away for the long weekend and then I'll drive back to the auto electrician for that. So at least I will get to have a few days um, and just hopefully the van starts so I can get back. But otherwise the mechanic just hit it with a hammer. So I brought a hammer and I'll try and attempt that if it doesn't work. So I've just been sitting out laying in the shade kind of having a little nap and now I'm back in the van with my lunch which is just a Vegemite sandwich so I think I'm just gonna have a pretty chilled out day today and probably go for a walk after this. I then went for a walk around along the peninsula, found a shady spot under the tree and looked out across the water and then I headed back and went for a swim in the river pool. So I've just gotten back from the swim and I'm about to attempt to use my outdoor shower. This is either going to go really well or be a complete disaster. I haven't used it yet but I want to wash my hair. So that's how much water I've used out of my 20 litres from this morning and showering. So I just had a wrap for dinner and now I'm back sitting at my favourite spot here looking out on the water while the sun sets. So as you can see I've now made the van into bed mode so I'm just going to watch a TV show and then I'll probably go back out again later and then come back. I had a pretty good night's sleep I woke up and uh, I had a cheesy Vegemite sandwich, the fave for breakfast and now I'm going on a bit of a walk today so actually put some runners on this time because my feet were kind of sore after my walk yesterday and I found this bush walking track and down the bottom is a beach so I'm going to come back there later. So apparently this is part of the Great North Walk, I just saw a sign and I'm hoping to get to a lookout because um, at the moment I can just see glimpses of the river but you get an idea of how high up I am at the moment. That's the track I just came down. So I guess I am going to a dam, I'm not entirely sure what to expect but I could do with a bit of a cool off, so <laughs> this is so cool. I've reached the dam. It's pretty low at the moment. I thought, oh, I'll just go for a walk, and I saw that the path on Google Maps was through the bush. But it's pretty cool that it actually comes out to here, so I think I'll go down to this little beach bit here and just, like, rinse my hands off. Hopefully it's nice and cool. Everyone else who I passed has had way more serious, like, on hiking packs and hiking boots on and then there's just me in like my Nikes and feel a bit unprepared but I'm pretty sure I'm almost at the end now. So I thought I was near the end but I just noticed I'm still quite high up and then I saw that which I think is the continuance of the path. It's still going upwards which means I have to come back down again so I think I'm still quite a ways from the street. I'm so exhausted after my misadventure. I'm back here at the van now and I'm just having a little nap but it's really hot in here so I'm gonna go outside and have a nap out there but I will fill you in on everything when I am refreshed. 
that I thought I would go for a pleasant stroll and uh, turned into a, an 11.5 kilometer bushwalk. <laughs> Uh, basically, I didn't check to see if it was a bushwalk. I thought it would just be like a little local trail that looped out onto the street. Clearly, I didn't read the signs because um, I thought on the map it looped up, but it just didn't. There was this little gap. So I got to the dam and I thought, oh, the exit will be just around the corner here, and it wasn't. And then I thought I could cut through to the street pretty easily, and that didn't work. So by the time I decided to turn back, I only had like 200 mils of water left. And the only good thing was that there was a bit of a breeze and at least it was downhill on the way back. But certainly I think I need to get one of those drink bottles that like you can drink water from everywhere that has one of those fancy filters in it uh, to stop that from happening again. <laughs> So hungry and dehydrated after my bush walk, I finally made it back to the van and had some baked beans on toast and of course lots of water. For dinner I made some pasta because I wanted to have some carbs after a long and exhausting day. The next day I packed my bag to head to Dangar Island. So today is Monday and tomorrow is a public holiday and most people are counting this as a long weekend so I foolishly thought that the ferry that I was going to catch would be on the public holiday timetable and also that the public holiday timetable would be less frequent than the weekday timetable but it wasn't so i got there and the next ferry is not for 40 minutes so now i'm just going to sit in the shade and try and cool off because it's another really hot day and i'll head back around and i'm going to go to the island over there the ferry ride there is about 30 minutes and it takes you around the edge of the island and since it was the day before Australia Day, there was an ADF plane flying over. If you know more about planes, then you might know a bit more about what kind of model this is. And then we arrived at Dangar Island Wharf. This is a very beautiful, leafy and quiet island that I decided to walk across and head to a peaceful beach on the opposite side where I went for a bit of a dip in the water and did some riding while sitting on the sand. So I'm here on Dangar Island, which is an island on the Hawkesbury River that is home to over 200 permanent residents. And it's really beautiful here and leafy. You've got the water right there. Most people have their own jetty, as you can see, because it is water access only, which is the only downside is there's not really many places to moor your boat back on the mainland so a lot of the locals here have to catch the ferry to work every day which gets quite expensive but it's super nice there's no cars allowed here and all around me is evidence of a tight-knit local community after a relaxing day on Dangar Island, I hopped back on the ferry and appreciated the river views with the afternoon sun as I returned to the mainland to meet a friend for the evening. And I passed a very large school of jellyfish on the way back over. So we've just made some wraps for dinner and Jess is here from my Locals Guide to Sydney video. We're eating and looking out at the beautiful view. It's a little hard to see, but there were a couple of possums in the tree right next to the van. All right, well, Jess is now the first person to be in the van other than me. I so know, this I'm is breaking very it in. Yeah, but a possum just literally tried to climb my leg outside. I could feel its little whiskers <laughs> sniffing me, that possum from earlier. Thought you were a yeah, tree. it must have. Good morning, Jess. Good morning. I have coffee. Yes, we're happy now we have coffee. So we had our delicious breakfast Very and then we swam in the river pool. Now we're just admiring the view. And it's like such a beautiful day. It's and we like found a too. great shady spot, so yeah. hopefully we won't be bad. So Jess has left and I was sitting in my favourite spot for an hour looking out at the water and it was very relaxing. I think I'm going to head home now just to beat all the Australia Day long weekend traffic. So a quick review of Brooklyn, there's plenty of places to park with multiple car parks and other private side streets to choose from. There's lots of toilets all around and there's showers by the river pool too. 
it's a really beautiful spot you're able to park and actually have a view as well as do lots of activities including swimming boating fishing jet skis there's a couple of restaurants on the water and of course taking a trip across to the island so this was a really fun place to stay for a few days with my new starter motor installed, I decided to head somewhere familiar for my next night, so I went to Copacabana and had a quiet day on the beach and made myself a Vegemite and cheese sandwich for dinner. Good morning, I'm back in the van. This is my first morning after the starter motor has been repaired. I did get to go away to Brooklyn as you saw, and then the van wouldn't start, but I managed to find the starter motor hit it with a hammer and it started again but that's not really a reliable long-term solution so I got it replaced so now I'm just waiting hopefully the warranty company is going to pay for it but I decided to come to Copacabana today because it's just somewhere that's familiar before I get started with my proper journey going to some places that I haven't been before so I'm having some Nutella toast and then I think I'm going to head out for a walk along the beach. So I headed out for a short walk along the beach and when I arrived at the river I found somewhere to sit. I spent the past hour here writing, I'm working on a screenplay at the moment and I think I've just worked out my entire structure which I'm very happy about. I find it really relaxing to sit somewhere outside and write. So I had lunch and then I just chilled in the van and read for a bit and as you can see I've had a shower at the beach showers here and now I'm going to pack everything up for the evening and find somewhere else to park for tonight. I'm making my Nutella toast on my sandwich press and this leads the battery to drain majorly so that says 43% at the moment and it wasn't 100 so it will pick back up <laughs> it's just got down to 15 but it does pick back up once I turn it off. So I drove around for a bit last night trying to find somewhere to park and I ended up uh, parking a few streets away from North Avoca Beach just because it was a bit quieter and more private and I've got a pretty good spot here. So I found a bushwalk that I want to do so I'm going to pack up the van and drive there. I've made myself packed lunch so I just need to clean up and head over there. I made a quick pit stop at North Avoca Beach to use their facilities before heading out on my bushwalk. I thought I'd do a little review of Copacabana. The thing that I love about it is the beach is amazing on hot days. It's a really big beach. It's actually connected to another beach, McMaster's, so it has two sets of flags, so there's plenty of room to swim. There's the dog bit in the middle, and it's great to be able to go for a walk around the river that joins up to the ocean at high tide. There are toilets and private showers attached to the Surf Lifesaving Club, which also has a little eatery that is quite cheap attached to the side. And there's some more restaurants and a general store also on the main street. Wow, this is crazy. I've literally never been to a lookout like this. This is Colin Waters Lookout. And I thought over those hills just there was just more hills like covered in kind of a haze, just like the Blue Mountains makes it look blue. But I realized by looking along the whole way, but that's a boat over there and that that's actually the ocean and we are like completely surrounded by the coastline here. Well I'm really glad I did this walk because I've definitely never been to a lookout that looked on the ocean that's this high up or that has the ocean truly wrapping around the whole lookout. It's actually really strange that all I can see, the entire horizon, is just ocean but it is really cool. And I was lucky enough to just glimpse some wallabies whilst I was returning from my walk. So there I was, thinking that I would just get some of this fern scenery, and then some wallabies decided to bounce past. I just dealt with my first ant infestation. Basically, I had my donuts in here, and I was thinking, oh, they won't go stale, because it's more or less, like, sealed-ish around the edges, but still an ant struggling on there now. <laughs> yes, I put it in my little storage cabinet, and the ants got in. Now it's okay, they didn't eat much, but they did infest the whole cupboard where I put them in, so just had to become a serial ant murderer to get rid of them. I popped to the local shops to get some supplies. Peanut butter sandwich for dinner. And parked up near the bushwalk for the night. 
So it's now the end of my first week and the screen did do this thing where it's only gone to half but as you can see the battery is on 100% and the fridge has not gone off for the whole week so I would call this a success. Well all of my first week of van life has been a bit of a roller coaster but we are on the right track now. I'm really enjoying traveling and discovering new parts of New South Wales and I can't wait to continue with my trip. I will be posting new videos every single Saturday about van vlogs or other van life content so subscribe if you want to be a part of the journey and if you want to check out my van conversion or my completed van build video then those will be linked in the description below. I hope you found this video interesting or entertaining or useful and if you want more then be sure to like, subscribe and I'll see you next time.